I'm Zach George, I train dogs, and this is my new dog, Inertia. I'm taking you along as I train her from day one. You can start from the beginning or pick up anywhere and start learning. Welcome to the dog training experience. Today, we'll push the boundaries of what inertia is capable of at the young age of 22 weeks, and I'm gonna to continue to train her in really challenging public places. By now, inertia is quite conditioned to immediately investigate a new bark box. It's definitely one of the highlights of her month. This bark box represents like the best of the best. Their most popular toys that they've ever made redesigned in a completely new way. They're calling this the Franken Toys Edition. One of her favorite toys, it's held up really well, has been this toy. They've basically taken something similar and combined it with a ballerina bottom. To dogs, that makes perfect sense. Always high quality toys, the squeaks are always really good. This one's like the half seagull with pizza wings. Whatever it is, Inertia loves this. And see, look, that is high value currency when your dog loves something that much. A Franken chew. We have bacon blackberry dog cookies, top notch ingredients in these, and duck and blueberry treats. Each box is worth about $40. You can see there's a lot of high quality stuff in here, but bark boxes start at $22 a month. Get a free bark box when you sign up for a six or 12 month subscription. Just go to barkbox.com slash dog training. I'll have a link below. We're going to do an unplanned dog training experience lesson here. You might notice her keep away right now is probably worse than ever. I really feel like I need to address that because this is an out of control habit. Inertia, you've got to bring that back to me. Usually I won't use treats when I'm training fetch because I want the dog amped up and wanting to play and be energetic so that I can get their energy out. But right now I'm not really interested in playing a game of fetch. So I'm not worried about quelling her desire to play. In fact, I'd kind of prefer it right now. I'm gonna use treats. I'm gonna let her know I have this. Hey, Inertia, get her attention. What's that? Oh, I know. What's this? Do you want this? Good, very good. Good job, sit. Good, fantastic. Okay, you can go play with it. So I'm gonna let her go back to the toy. Inertia, come here, what's this? See, I'm not just holding the treat out, I'm actually tossing it to make it more exciting. Cause saying, hey, come here with a treat. She's like, no, I'm really into this toy right now. And I really want to enjoy it. I want to show her there's a certain way to enjoy this toy. <laughs> when you're training a dog, you have to be ridiculously repetitive sometimes to really get them to understand what you want. Get it. So I'm just going to run through this a few times. So she starts to equate it. Inertia, come. Nice. Come here. Right now, I don't even care if she brings the toy to me. I want her coming to me at the very least when I call her. If your dog is really out of control with keep away like that, it's also advisable to have them on lead. We are in the early stages of letting Inertia explore the house off leash like this. So in this case, the treats were enough to get her attention on me, but I would absolutely consider putting her back on lead in a situation like this in the future. I'm about to do a training session with Inertia, and I was like, hey, why don't I throw the toy a few times for her, get some of that excess energy out to really prime her for an optimized training session. Inertia, I'm over here, come here. If I pretend like I'm gonna go, she gets closer to me. And go. That's right. Hey, Inertia, over here. I think she's telling me she wants to go inside. She keeps running into the studio and then coming back out. One more. Okay, I'll take it. I've been pretty consistent about one more and meaning it. So I'll usually give her notice, look, this is the last one. Give me one more. Something that I need to revisit now with inertia is hold. You might recall that we've been teaching her how to hold on to this, but her tendency is to like hold on to it and then let it go sometimes. What I'm ultimately trying to teach her is, hey, hold on to this thing, this random thing, and stay right here. Hold is the foundation for so many useful behaviors moving forward. So we're gonna work on that for a bit. Hold. Wait. I'm gonna try to implement weight withhold because what I'm trying to teach her about weight is that it's an instant freeze position, like stop right there. At least in most cases that I can think of right now. Okay, wait, yes, good. She tends to back away a little bit. I really just want her staying still, but I'll take the fact that she's holding for duration over the fact that she's backing up when she's not supposed to. What's this? Get it? Wait, yes. Real close right there. You could also use a clicker if you were clicker training here or say yes. Yes, good girl. I don't want her letting go on the word yes. I need to work on that as well. Okay, wait, let go. I wanted to give her a victory there, yes. 
give her a bunch of little small treats. Get it? Hold, let go, yes. So there I'm actually telling her let go before she lets go in the hope that she will hold on to it until I ask her to let go. Get it, wait, let go. Yes, that was looking good. Still only a brief second, hold it. I would love to get three seconds or longer. Almost. Here, get it? Here, hold it. Let go, yes! You can really read her eyes there. You can see that she's really processing it. Hold, let go, yes. Since she's pretty good about hold and let go, I also wanna make sure that I focus on acknowledging her success while she's holding onto the object. Wait. Let go. Yes! Gonna give her a really big jackpot reward there. That was the best example to date of hold and really starting to get the concept. That's where we currently are on hold for a period of time. I'm gonna continue to work on that and I'll keep you posted. If you're new to dog training too, don't forget about both of my books. My first book here is really designed for the person who's thinking about getting a dog or has recently gotten a dog. It provides a big overview of how to raise a dog. And this one is if you've had a dog for a little while but you're really experiencing some issues with them. I'll cover the most common training problems in this book. I'll have links in the description where you can pick them up. We've been working on Crawl and she's doing really well, but the thing about Crawl is you can't work on it too long with her. She starts to get frustrated and starts doing her play deads and everything to try and figure out what it is she's supposed to do. And if you think about it, like crawling is an acquired skill, at least to crawl in the fashion that we're asking her to do it. I intend to keep this particular training session pretty short, but we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna start with a sit, sit give her something really easy to do, just to set the tone for the rest of the training session. That's the point of doing that. Let them know, hey, there's a high probability you're going to win a prize. Sit and down, good. Let's go ahead and reward on down, even though it's pretty well established. The last time we did this, I was luring and I was focused on trying to get that lure farther and farther away. But I don't wanna have to be like right next to my dog luring them in order to teach them to crawl. What we're trying to break new ground on is getting her to crawl with that lure farther away. So it's a little more impressive looking. Can you give me a play dead? I love it. I've been having trouble with play dead quite honestly. It hasn't been the most natural thing for her. So when she's been offering it or in the mood to do it, I've been like, okay, we can do a play dead training session. Wait, okay. Oops, if I get too far away, she gets up. So if I'm like, crawl, crawl. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I think I got to reward that. You saw how she started to get up a little at the end and I don't want that to become a habit, but that's better than she's been doing. Okay, we're gonna crawl. Look at that. Oh, that. Oh. I really should have rewarded that because she's trying harder and making more progress. So if she does that again, I'll reward. It's her coming up at the end. I was starting to get greedy and trying to push her. Okay, crawl. Yes, good. So rather than the lure being right here, it was right here. See that? Good job. That was really good. So I'm gonna try this completely different body position. Okay, let's try this. Whoa, good. It's the small things. She started to get up and she like self-corrected. So I like that. Wait, can you crawl? Notice my body position too. It's completely different than before. That was amazing. She's really starting to get it. Can you crawl? Oh my gosh. I can't believe how quickly she's getting this. Crawl, oh my goodness. That's wonderful. She's not done anything like that. That's brand new behavior. So I'm really enthused by that. We're gonna stop there. It's a pretty physical trick. I love that her progress is amazing. Sometimes it's tempting to just keep going and keep going. But in this case, we'll end on a good note. This is a trick we've been working on for weeks and weeks. And we had just been stuck at this singular point of having to lure her really closely and then she's just now putting it together. It's just really awesome to watch her figure out new things. When you see that light bulb going off with the dog in training, there's just nothing like it. Let's do an update on how Inertia is doing when it comes to getting on the furniture. You might remember probably a few weeks ago that she had developed the habit pretty organically of just when she would get hyper, she would jump up on the furniture. Very often people ask, how do you get your dog to not jump on the furniture? How do you get them to stop doing it? And ideally, if you have a new dog, you 
you prevent the habit from getting established to begin with, so it's never an issue. After I've done basic training with her or exercise with her, I'll encourage her to do like a sit or a down stay. Well, I've been encouraging her to hold these positions, whether it's a sit, a down. Now, if she were to get on the furniture, I would simply redirect her and encourage her to hold that position. But preventing the habit from getting established in the first place is really what's making all the difference with this. By having her drag around the liege wall in the house, I'm in a position to keep her from running and jumping on things. You might notice here, she does have an interest in furniture. Maybe she's not interested in jumping on it, but she is a little interested in chewing on it. I can say we've had no major furniture damage at all, but this is against the reason supervision is so important. Even though Inertia has her adult teeth here, she's still going through a teething phase. So it's important to make sure that your dog has plenty of things to chew on and you're still supervising. Leave it alone. Will you lie down? I'm gonna give her an alternative incompatible behavior. In this case, it's lie down out of the reach of the table. All in all, she isn't jumping on the furniture right now, and I'm going to attribute that to good management and showing her the behaviors I prefer that she do instead. It's really intuitive for us to wait until a problem occurs to then try to repair it and fix it, but that is the less preferable way to address unwanted behaviors. If your dog did already have the habit of jumping on the furniture, just be consistent and about showing them what you want. It's going to take significantly longer to get them to acquire the habit of not jumping on the furniture, but you'll get there. You just have to be overwhelmingly consistent in showing your dog what you do want them to do. One of my favorite tricks that I've taught Inertia so far is how to give a hug. I'm sure you've seen that by now, but it still needs some polishing. It's not ideal. And this is the thing about tricks. Your first or second or third drafts of those tricks aren't usually the finished ones. For example, let me show you what I'm saying here. You see how she jumps up and gives me a hug? She's really having issues with paws being on one side over here. Although I am gonna focus on weight. Did you notice how she got down really quickly a moment ago? Okay, get down. So I have two things to focus on, teaching her to hold the position and teaching her how to put one paw on each side of my neck here. I don't even know if that's how it's going to ultimately be. Maybe she's just never comfortable doing that. So I'm always prepared to accept what she's willing to give me, but I'm going to try to teach her what I want here. Sit, wait. Hugs. Look how she goes from side to side there. This is a mess. This is a mess. Wait. Call her. And see, I'm having Brie mark the behavior because I can't see what she's doing. Hug doesn't look real good if they're looking down. Go ahead again, Brie. Inertia. Go ahead and give her a yes when she looks up. Inertia. So, yes. Good girl. Uh, well. Yes. Good. I'm right here, I'm going to reward the correction for putting her both paws there. Wait. Inertia. Yes. Okay. Good job. Get down. Let's see if we can try that again and get a more successful version of hug. Hug. Oh, yes. There we go. Just took a little reminder. Go ahead and call her. Inertia, yes. Before you say yes, insist that she hold it for a more a longer period of time, please. Inertia. Yes. Good. Good job. I gave her a giant reward there. And that was pushing it. Like you could make the case that maybe we should have rewarded her for those small successes because she really was trying. Okay. And I like how she's waiting until I say okay, so she knows the trick is over. It's always worth underscoring that tricks like this have far reaching benefit to all of your training. So before you tell yourself, I'm not so interested in tricks, weigh how important they are for building broad, generalized communication so that you can ultimately just talk to your dog. Tricks like that build communication between you and your dog. Wait, take a bow. Love it. Wait, your take a bow looks great. I wonder if we can get her to put that head down a little bit more. Yeah. Yes, wait. Isn't that great? I love how she's resting her head on the ground there. Take a bow is just turning out to be one of my favorite tricks to do with her. She really seems to enjoy it and she's excelling with it, so I've been doing it a lot. Conversely, when there are tricks that she's not enjoying as much, I kind of ease up on those, like play dead, which we talked about. I'm trying to kind of counter condition her and get her more willing to do things like play dead and, and other tricks that she might not be feeling right now.
Okay, this should be interesting because we're going to be taking inertia to Jefferson Feed and Garden Center here in New Orleans where there's going to be other animals, food for other animals, and lots of other distracting things. She was reluctant to come in there. I just took like a minute or two, maybe three, let her smell, evaluate the scene, see what was going on. This is her very first time actually being able to walk around in a pet supply store like this. The last time she was in a place like this, she wasn't allowed to walk on the floor because of her vaccination status. Got to be pretty crazy for her. I'm just going to walk around with her for a little bit here and then give her the opportunity to do some training. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm at the pet supply store Jefferson Feed right now in New Orleans and doing some general socializing and training with Inertia. Hello. Say hi. Thank you. Good girl, don't jump. Nice job. Thanks. Look how interested she is in just smelling everything. She's no doubt smelling things that she's never smelled before. That must be very interesting to her. Some dogs up for adoption over here. See how she does, pretty close range. She's just realized her cat's over here. Now, if she were reacting and barking, I wouldn't be here, but she's being pretty good. So I wanna give her the opportunity to explore when she's behaving calmly. She's unsure of the cat. Our cat has trained her to be quite skeptical of cats so far, so that's good. Those things swat. Can you give me a play dead? Yes. She's open to doing a play dead in public. That really makes me happy. Can you play dead? Oh, wow. Good. We're gonna do a hug. Wait. Oops. Get down. Almost. Ready? Hugs. I'm gonna do another lap of the store. Another thing that I love about training in places like this is that it gives us so many opportunities to practice our real life leave it. Leave it alone. Leave it. Come. That's right. Good. This way? Oh, well, we got a bird up there. Oh my God, what a beautiful baby. <laughs> oh, thanks. Do you wanna say hi? Can I? Yeah, sure, Hello. please. Oh, this might be interesting. It's an opportunity to practice on some new stairs. Inertia, wanna come here? Inertia still isn't very proficient at walking up and down okay. stairs. And these stairs are extra different because they're made of metal. She's never seen that before. Do you wanna come up here? Thought she might follow me. Let's see if she'll come here, if she'll do it for food or if she's just too nervous. Right here. There you go. That's it. Come on. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Yes. Come on. Get it. Get it. Yes. There you go. There's the breakthrough moment. Yes. There you go. That was an example of just sticking with her, letting her figure it out, rather than waiting until you encounter metal stairs in real life. And then you discover that, oh, my dog doesn't like the metal stairs. I feel pretty good about this outing, this training session. This was really good for her to see a variety of new things and to even start listening to me in a really crazy, distracting environment. You will not regret getting your free BarkBox. Go to BarkBox.com slash dog training and sign up for a six or 12 month subscription. I'll have that link below. Keep up in real time with Bree, Indy, Angela, Inertia, and me on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe to my channel and I'll have links to my books in the description too. Next time, Inertia is gonna have the most distractions she's ever experienced. It's gonna be nuts. Oh.